Jesus Christ. Amen. The bread of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now for a more. Amen. The members of the mansion of blessedness in Kaduna State thank the Father immensely for this opportunity he has given unto us to present our first webinar. The topics border on sexual abuse and children upbringing. Our presenters are Blessed Mother Designate Mercy Okoli. She will be talking on safeguarding our children against sexual inappropriateness. The second presenter is Blessed Mother Designate Abbasiyama Ambi. She'll be talking on mother's roles in children's upbringing. Please, listeners and viewers, listen to them and take the Father's advice now and forevermore. Amen. We thank the Almighty God for this privilege that he has given to us to come and talk on these important issues bothering us in this present day. Thank you for listening. The topic once again is safeguarding our children against sexual inappropriateness. Due to the increase in rape and other sexual inappropriateness, it is important that we as parents, as guardians, and especially as mothers are educated on these issues and our children properly guided. We know we cannot always be with our children, but safeguarding them is one of the major duties in parenting. We have heard of incidents of few months old babies, toddlers, children, elderly people, boys, girls, even animals being raped. Most times we center our attention only on girls. Boys are equally violated. So it is high time we started talking to ourselves and taking actions. Conversation with our children about inappropriate sexual behaviors can be stressful to plan, but it is a safety talk we cannot avoid at this time. Apart from the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic, another trending issue is rape and other sexual violations. So it is key that we start conversations with our children as soon as they begin to talk, as soon as they start talking about feelings and emotions. It is never too late to start. The time is now. Rape is one of the most terrifying crimes committed against another person without the person's consent. It is defined as one person forcing another person to have sex or perform sexual acts using manipulations, physical violence, or threat. Sexual abuse is child's sexual molestations. Children are not capable of giving informed consent. Sexual abuse, rape, and sexual assault have been used sometimes interchangeably. They are all crimes. They are bad. There is no foolproof or perfect ways of safeguarding our children against these evils. Anyone can be a victim. It can happen to any child or anyone of any culture, race, socioeconomic status, ethnic group, or religion. Rapists choose victims who are vulnerable and accessible to them. No matter what precautions we take, there is no guarantee that rape won't happen. However, there are precautionary steps we can take to guard and guide our children. We all know that if any abuse happens to a child, the perpetrator is to blame, but at times the parents are culpable, either through carelessness, negligence, or ignorance. Even if we are not sure of the situation, we should be able to gauge it and then make amend. We should know that most rapes take place in the victims or rapist homes. It is therefore important to be involved in our children's life and make them our friends. If we are actively involved, it is easier to know or see warning signs of any abuse because there are always warning signs. Notice any change in behavior, no matter how minute. Whether it is happening to your child or any other child, step in and make a big difference. Never take any sign for granted. Again, show interest in their day-to-day -day activities 
Ask them what they did during the day in your absence or in their schools or even in the church. Ask them who they were with, the activities carried out, whether they enjoyed the activities or whether they enjoyed themselves. Choose caregivers, house helps, nannies, home lesson teachers, coaches and so on carefully. Careful screening is important. Know who you entrust your children to. The perpetrators of these evil acts can be man or woman. Therefore, it is important to know the type of people in your children's life. Know those they are always with or are always wanting to be with. These people can be uncles, aunties, moms, dads, friends, neighbors, teachers, classmates, other children in the neighborhood, coaches, and even siblings. No one should be trusted. Children can easily be tricked with such things as sweets, biscuits, I love you, and so on. They are also able to keep secrets in return for gifts of money. And I want to speak at their own peril. Let them know that no one should be trusted. If in a relationship, they should be able to assess the relationship and know when to cut the ties. Teach them sex education. They should be well informed on this. Talk to them about sexual abuse and violations openly in such a way that they feel comfortable and can open up. If you share a friendly relationship with your children, they should be able to confide in you. Some children may have misconceptions about sexual inappropriateness they have picked from their peers or the media. Let them know that perpetrators of such crimes in most cases are people known to the victim. Trust, trusted family friends, relatives, or regular family friends. Censor the type of films they watch. Offensive and immoral films should not be permitted. These have negative influence on their impressionable mind. What about the media? Incidents of rapes, sexual abuse, and sexual violence are frequently covered by news media and portraits in television shows. Do not discourage your children from listening to these news. Ask them questions about the news or the coverage, then start up honest conversations. Ask such questions as, have you heard of this type of incidents? What do you think about it? Teach them to be wary of social media friends, especially those wanting to be their lovers. Internet dating is fast becoming a fad among teenagers and young adults. Our children are exposed to danger when they engage in internet dating. We have had our social media friends luring victims, holding them hostages, and sexually abusing them. Some of the victims do not live to tell the story. They should also be cautious of strangers who offers them right. Show your children that you value their views. Open doors for more conversations. Encourage your children to speak up. Most children trust their friends more than they do their parents because they feel free to talk to their friends. This is why parents should ensure that they make their children their friends. When children know that their voice will be heard and taken seriously, it gives them the courage to speak up when something is not right. Teach them how to handle their friends, learning from your own guts. Give them chance to raise topics, to ask questions, to give their own opinions and bring up their concerns. You may use your own experience to tell or share a safety story so as to make the conversation real. After all, they are your friends. If there is no personal or comfortable experience to share, you can use someone else's own. You can ask open-ended questions such as, is there anything else you want to know or talk about? Teach your children about boundaries. Their bodies belong to them, so there should be boundaries. Let them know that no one has any right to touch them inappropriately and has no right to make them feel uncomfortable. Certain parts of their bodies should not be touched by anybody. Family members, regular family friends, their own friends, classmates, teachers, neighbors, anyone at all. Whether hugging, kissing, stroking, groping, touching, and so on. Let them know the implications and consequences of such gestures. Let them also know the names of their parts of their body. While some parents are more concerned with their own daily activities and jobs, some others do not have the choice to be present in their children's life. They rarely have time for their children or words. They leave for daily work early in the morning and come back late, leaving their children to be on their own or in the care of a nanny or neighbors. No matter how busy you are, always be available for your children. Have listening ears. Do not shoot them when they want to talk to you because you never can say. Spend quality time with them, especially when there is no divided attention or interest. Make them trust you and ensure that you are always there for them. And that they can always come to you if they have anything bothering them or someone is making uncomfortable advances or touching them in a way they are not comfortable with. Make them feel very free with you. Follow your words and assurances to them. Be trustworthy. 
Having said all this, if you suspect that your child has acted inappropriately or hurt another child, speak with your child immediately. Take necessary steps to ensure the safety of others that may be at risk. Reach out for professionals if need be. Let your children know that certain behaviors are not acceptable and that there will always be serious consequences that may affect them and jeopardize their future. Parents should always be vigilant, especially at this age of social media, online communication and electronic sharing of explicit images. It is therefore important to teach the children strategies to help avoid sexual assault and rape. One of such strategies is that they should learn to avoid at all costs unsafe situations, environments, people, strangers and dark places. They should avoid entry and empty house or relying on others. Awareness and assertive behaviors like saying emphatic no may be a defense against becoming an easy target. It can also make the victim determine or assess the attacker. Also teach them modest and decent dressing. This helps to avoid unnecessary embarrassing situation from undue attention paid to what they wear. Teach them how to hold their heads high up, walk confidently, directly, and at a steady pace. They should avoid drugs and alcohol. This can impair their ability to respond to emergencies. When faced with a perpetrator, they should not freeze, they should not fear. They should make the most use of the first precious minutes. At this time, the rapist is not in total control, so the chances of escape are high. However, they should also know that they may not be in total control, especially if the perpetrator is armed or the victim is drugged or under influence of alcohol. Active resistance is to react immediately to startle the attacker to get away immediately. Use any available item such as key, hairspray, paws, pepper spray, and so on. They should stay alert and aware of the environment. Know where the exit or emergency call box, if any, is, especially when in such places as clubs and hotels. Teach your children to trust their instincts. If a place or situation or person makes them feel unsafe, they should leave immediately. If being followed, head to a well-lit place where they think there might be people who may be of help to them. If possible, they should raise alarm. They should flee if they are in a potentially dangerous situation. Often, victims ignore danger signs because they do not want to be impolite or cause embarrassment. Always make sure the car doors are locked, whether or not in the car. Always check your rear view mirror when driving. When returning to the car, always learn to have your car keys in your hands, ready for using unlocking the door and turning on the ignition. The car key can also be used as a weapon. Importantly, taking a self-defense course will not be out of place. How does rape affect victims? Victims of rape or sexual abuse or sexual violence or suffer emotional trauma. As for the children, the result is, in most cases, psychological or physiological damage. The worst victims are the silent victims within the families, incest. Victims may suffer abuse of drug or alcohol, sleepless nights due to flashbacks, sexual issues, guilt, shame, lack of complete trust in people, feeling of anger, fear of stigmatization, living in fear, withdrawn, and so on. Some even commit suicide. What should the victim do? The first thing is to seek medical attention. Speak out. Any information about the attacker can be very, very useful. How do we help the victims? Parents should figure out how to help the victims. Survivors of these atrocities need to be calm. The trauma can be very overwhelming, but they need to be calm. They need our unconditional support. They need our acceptance and reassurance that the incident was not their fault. Counseling is very important to help the victim in regulating his or her emotional state. It is a vital part in total recovery from the trauma. Babies, toddlers, and children are very vulnerable and cannot help themselves. Therefore, all of us should be very vigilant, always consciously monitoring them and knowing where they are at any point in time. Parents or guardians should be morally sound, exhibiting behaviors worthy of emulation. There should be increased public awareness, talks, and taking necessary steps towards ensuring the safety of our children and ourselves are inexhaustible and cannot be overemphasized. We can talk on and on and on on this topic. Above all this, we should teach our children the ways of the Lord. They should allow the fear of God to rule in their hearts. We should be prayerful too and ask God for his divine protection. 
Thank you for listening. God bless all of us and protect us all. Amen. I thank God Almighty for a day like this, a day we have come to talk on issues that we have been overlooking. And one of such issues is the role, the mother's roles in children's upbringing. It is no coincidence that children gravitate towards the mother. This is because mother is the strongest and most special person in their life. Mother's roles range from raising her children to inculcating morals and values into them to playing a crucial role in their future developments. She makes tremendous contributions and impacts positively in their life through her own examples. The moment a woman becomes a mother, her life takes a big turn. She no longer remains the woman whose world revolves around her. Her children, the apples of her eyes, become her, her very own little world. The love of a mother for her children is so powerful, so sacred, and almost impossible to capture it in ways. The mother-child relationship is so fragile, yet very strong. It is vulnerable. It is continually tested by challenges associated with child upbringing. However, as much as she dots on her children, her role in her children's development is critical. Raising a child is no child's play. It is the most responsible task any human can undertake. Apart from raising, educating, inculcating values and ethics into a child, a mother makes important contributions in deciding the course of her children's life. From the day a child is born, his first contact or interaction or socialization is his mother. His mother is his teacher. He learns everything from her, learn to talk, walk, etc. His mother is his friend, his role model. He looks up to her for everything. He learns how the world works through his mother. She is his wealth of information. He learns to love, have compassion, forgiveness, humanity, equity, values, ethics, respect, and so on. She is the child's best teacher. In all this, it is important that she pays close attention to what the child learns from her and sets reasonable expectations. Nothing can take the place of a happy home. The television is not a replacement of fulfilling the vacuum created by the absence of love and attention. The mother is expected to create a proper environment for the children to learn, play and grow in the fear of God. It is the mother's responsibility to ensure that the children learn to love and serve each other. They should learn the commandments of God, learn to have faith and trust in God and have pray and be prayerful. It is the mother's duty to make her children have a sense of responsibility to the others. Being dutiful is equally of value. This sense of responsibility eventually becomes a habit, which will also eventually be carried over to those outside the family. She also teaches her ch children self-esteem, accountability, determination, to be of good behavior, to, ap to appreciate values, and to become responsible members of the family and of the society. Discipline has to do with training children so that they function well at home 
and in the society. It is central to children's upbringing. It is a major aspect in child's development. The unconditional love of a mother has the inclination to spoil the children. The children need to learn and know their boundaries and the implication of pushing the boundaries. As a mother, discipline her children. She makes them understand what behavior and choices are ex accepted and what are not. Disciplining can be demanding. The parents, especially mothers, need to be consistent, fair and firm. Some children and adolescents can be annoying, but a good mother, praying mother, needs to create a culture of a culture of character and impart them to her children. Lack of discipline can result in an ugly and un inappropriate behavior in the children's development. Children's future development depends, in most cases, on the training and guidance of their mother. It is therefore crucial that mothers spend as much time as with her children as possible. Attachments between a mother and her children helps build an emotional bond. This is very important to building confidence in the children. On the other hand, a lack of bond may lead to aggression, hostility, anxiety, depression, and so on. It, it has been proved that a child who has an insecure attachment with his mother is prone to developing behavioral problems such as dejection, rejection, discouragement, disobedience, and other misbehaviors. Therefore, a mother's attachment with her child has deep impact on that child. Children need quality time with their mother. Raising a child, as we all know, is not an easy task. It is among the most challenging and all-consuming responsibilities. But good parenting is fatal to God and to the society. A good mother starts early to inculcate her children on how to understand and overcome peer group pressure and the skill of making informed and appropriate decision and choice choices. She inculcates in her children a high sense of family unity by spending time together until the child are mentally and emotional, emotionally matured and can make the right decisions and choices. She guides and counsel her children. She develops trust, sets good examples of pure life, teaches positive thinking, positive attitudes, happiness, contentment, and other sets of inner values that can see the children through life. This is where she ensures controlled behaviors, actions, and situations, and makes out appropriate and adequate discipline when necessary, but with love. As we have said earlier on, a good mother is a great teacher. She is not a babysitter, never off duty. She uses every opportunity to teach her children etiquette and ways to salvation. She permits less of dis distractions and, act and artifacts that draw the children away from home and away from God. Her aim is to nurture children who will be good builders of happy homes and responsible citizens. She does not only raise children, she raises the future. In all this, she needs to exercise wisdom and righteousness all the days of her life. A good mother has unlimited love for her children, whether biological or not. Though raising children can be quite demanding, she does not give up on them. The children are the center stage of her life. She consciously monitors 
their activities and whereabouts. She provides emotional and spiritual stability. In this age of permissiveness, waywardness, juvenile delinquency, broken homes, drug abuse, alarming rate of teenage suicide, internet dating, online communication, social media, inappropriate and indecent dressing, and so on. It is important that home environment is conducive for is conducive, full of love and care. The mother should ensure that her children' welfare will well-being are never neglected. The role of mother in family development cannot be overemphasized. Prayer is a, a powerful tool in a happy home. We often hear that a family that pray together stay together. Hence, family devotion to, to God provides unity, peace, and happiness. It is also not only a deterrent of sin, but also a provider of close relationship with God. The mother should always be spiritually vigilant. This is because children are born into this world full of physical and spiritual wickedness. The scripture says, we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So mothers and their children should take unto themselves the whole armor of God, so that they may be able to withstand the evil day. They should pray without ceasing. A good mother plays the role of a model worthy of emulation, possessing the qualities of the virtuous woman recorded in Prophet chapter 31 from verse 10 to the end. Thank you for listening. So, our dear listeners, we have heard it all from our blessed mothers. Please, your opinions, contributions, thoughts, suggestions are all welcome. This can be sent through our WhatsApp number 070-817-14986. Take it again. 070-817-14986. Thank you all. Father bless you all. May the Father continue to protect our children Amen. and parents. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for viewing and listening. Thank you and goodbye.